Hello there and welcome to this video on conversations on consciousness. My name is Ladron and today I would like to speak to you about the Divine Masculine. So this is something that I've heard for, for some time, the Divine Masculine. Now many many years ago, um, you know, because of the war, because of the way our elders, our parents, our grandparents, our great grandparents uh, thought, you know, a lot of people were, especially men, well probably and women, but both sexes were told not to speak too much of their emotions or suppressed in a way. For me, I've always lived my life in a way of openness, of communication, and I guess it is reading some stuff or speaking, people speaking to me, say, hey, you're, you, know, you know, have you studied things about divine masculine? And what that is, is I think there's a number of elements of a person which makes a person very beautiful. And this isn't just about being masculine or, you know, it's also, you know, the feminine side. It's, I think it's just simple traits of a human being which can be very beautiful. So things that I admire in people are trust, uh, respect, um, truth, uh, communication, um, love, you know, openness, um, intelligence, awareness, um, and, and creativity, you know, and all these beautiful things. Um, Self-respect also is a very important thing that, you know, so I'll try and touch on a few of these. You know, as a, as a guy, as a man, that, you know, I was once a boy and this is one thing that I've always thought about in, in life is that in tribes, in indigenous, indigenous tribes across the world, young boys are men at very young ages, like 10, 12 years old, because they have learned how to go out and fight or to hunt and they've earned the class of being a man. Um, not quite much a father yet, but however, um, being a man itself. When I was in Indonesia back three years ago, um, such a beautiful experience. I saw some you know, beautiful tribes there in, in Raja Ampat, one of the last untouched places on earth. Very beautiful. Not many modern buildings there. And one day I was just going for a walk on my own on the beach and near this like cove, this cave, and I just I'm going to sit there and just sit and meditate. And then suddenly I saw this young girl walking up these steps. She must have been about five or six years old, holding a machete. <laughs> this little sword, you know, and she had a bag of like fruit, which she must have climbed a tree and cut these. And I mean, if we saw this young girl even, um, I'm sure it was a girl, you know, with like this sharp knife, it's kind of like we would think, get that back here. Where do you get that from? But because it was a different country, I knew that it was just the way that they were. And I thought, I can't be the one to tell her that, you know, this isn't right. This is the way she lives. Okay. She had trouble climbing this, this like a hill part. So that's when I helped her. I said, oh, can I help you? And, she, you know, I grabbed her things and I said, I put them here. And she she could climb up this um, this rocky path. And she, she said, like, uh, Thank you. She spoke a bit of English. And it made me really think like, wow, yeah, you know, how how different are we in, in the Western world? Um, you know, the way we think, and the way we are controlled. And, you know, this young child is with this machete, like knowing how dangerous it is, but you now they can use it, you know, to, to help, you know, their, their life. Um, I'm sure it was anyway, because yeah, they must have done because of climbing a tree and cutting this fruit. I can't remember what fruit it was. So it's just what I'm saying is that these different tribes across the world, they have this upbringing of being a man, you know, being or being a woman, you know, like I'm, I'm going to focus more on man because I, I'm a guy and I can only relate to myself in my in my, in my, you know, my sex, basically, being being a man and speaking for others out there. That, you know, a handful of years ago, you know, less than 10 years ago, I didn't feel like I was a man yet, even though I had hit my, you know, mid-twenties, and I still felt very much like a boy. And I hadn't had that life experience or an elder or, 
the opportunity to face the world. <laughs> and I know that sounds very strange to hear, but at the time, well, at the time I didn't know that. But looking back, I knew that no, I I wasn't a man. I was still, I was still a young man, like I was still a boy almost. I hadn't grown into manhood, and yet it was such an. I was so much older. I you know I felt embarrassed by it. So like, what are we missing in in the Western world, in 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 England and and the Americas and other places where? You know, we're we're still bound by this title of being a man, and and okay, I felt always felt independent, but I've become even more independent and dependent on myself, and you know, being on my own for many many years and having to just be okay and do the things I had to do. I had no one else to help me, so I think these life experiences, me going,、uh, leaving leaving the country and going to the big city. And really facing things myself, you know, I was able to be okay and be be a man and be strong. And it wasn't until like a few relationships as well, which made me more realise that no, I'm not ready for. I wasn't ready for a relationship. I wanted one, but I hadn't grown into the man that I am today. It for me, it was much later. And I think I talk talk for many. Young men and boys, you know, old boys out there, who haven't really had their life experience because everything is so easy for us nowadays. We're not really taught things in schools.、Um, we're taught maths, English, science, history, geography, PE, art, etc. However, we're not taught about the psychology of the mind and how we think, and. You know, everyone's story at home is completely different. You know, living with parents or living on your own, or you know, having the the abusive sort of I don't know, uncle or grandparent, or you know, that that control in the family、uh, to do with religion or or not at all. It doesn't matter. I think that growing more into the manhood is something that you know we need to be initiated in. And this is what I'm talking about: tribes around the world that. They are initiated into manhood because they have to prove that they can hunt. They can prove that they can fish. They can, they can, they have to prove their elders that they are doing so. But what are we doing in this current age to become a man? All we're doing is just going out there and getting a job. But that's not teaching us like how to be strong. It's just okay, get a job, and we're not dealing with our emotions very well. For me, I didn't really understand more about me until. You know, ten years ago, and you know, being in my mid twenties, and I was just like not really aware. I was aware of myself in some way, but I've become even more aware of myself. And maybe I'm just speaking of awareness of, okay, that's just what life is like. You just become more aware. But no, I believe surely that, you know, I should have become feeling more of a man. You know, at a very young age, you know, twelve, thirteen years old, feeling. You know, very, very strong in myself, of able to handle life, no matter how sensitive I was. So that divine masculine, it's like I've always had a big respect for respect and truth and communication. And for me, it's always been hard to find people like myself who, you know, who offer the same qualities of life. And this is something that I've been more aware of, especially the last couple of years, with people I've spoken to. And it's like you don't think like that. And you know, I d- I personally don't like the typical guys that, you know who I find in in work environments. You know who who love beer, who love football, who are very not very open with their emotions. You know I like to talk about things emotionally, spiritually, and not get too deep. But it's just like, okay, how are you feeling today? Yeah, I'm alright. How are you? It's like, well, how are you really feeling? You know. And it's like, oh, I'm struggling with, with, you know, myself at the moment, or I'm finding things difficult, you know, relationship, or I've got a new puppy, and you know, I'm just finding things a bit difficult. And it's like, well, then you get in this conversation where you can help educate your fellow, you know, brother, you know, that's that's out there, and it's really, you know, the independence has been taken away from us from. You know everything that's out there. You know we don't 
have to even cook anymore. We can just get a takeaway, you know. We don't even have to wash clothes anymore. We can just pay someone to come and do it or we take it to the laundrette. And although we have to do it ourselves, sometimes we can just pay somebody to do it and we're not doing it ourselves. We're not, we're not learning about these things. For me, it seems very common sense, but life is just so much easier now than it was 50 years ago. And I believe life was much tougher then. And that's probably why some people our elders, you know, those that are older than, than my age anyway, that are, are very much closed off, are a bit more stubborn and, you know, independent and didn't have to open up and talk about things because they had to do things themselves. They didn't have that time, that space to communicate about their emotions, their feelings. But communication is a big thing that we all need in all relationships. And I'm not talking about rom romantic and or sexual ones with your partner. I'm talking about Relationships with yourself, relationship with friends, family, colleagues, you know, bosses, neighbors, people in the street, people at, you know, and other places like, that you go to, like, like supermarkets. It's just, it's being present and being a good listener. You know, I, I'm a great listener, I can listen to everything, but sometimes I find that I'm not engaging with the conversation, keeping it going. So I can listen, but it's like, okay. And then some after time I'll be thinking and I'll, I'll talk about my own experience and say, hey, I can relate to that. And that's the whole thing about empathy is that when we understand more about somebody, we can only understand it from our own past experience by emphasizing um, with empathy, sorry. Um, when we have empathy with somebody, we've been there, we can understand. We, we understand emotionally how that's affected us and how that person might be going through an experience. So like, what can we do to be more of a better person? Now, there is no better the same as, there is no less, you know, you are who you are. But it's like, if you want to perfect more the person who you are itself, then it's just you have to understand about people and their emotions. And I'm still learning, I'm not perfect. As I keep saying, I'm, I'm perfect in this moment, in this time to, for me to learn and to experience. However, I'm far from perfect, you know, in, in many areas where I'm aware that, you know, life gives us many different opportunities. And, you know, people are busy, you know, like the other day I walked past somebody who asked me a question and say, hey, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm really busy right now. And I just left because I had to focus on me, otherwise I was going to be late for, for a session that I was giving. So, and I could see their body language, oh, oh, okay, he's not talking to me right now. And I was like, well, if I stayed and spoke, then I would have been late for myself. So it's having this own self-respect, and it's something that is very attractive for me and other people that I find very beautiful. And like, when I see someone respecting themselves, but also giving as well, that you need to honor your own energy, your own time. Like, I've got people around me who who do sessions, who do readings, like, you know, uh, mediumship, etc., and and another and other sessions. And it's like, well, if you're you need to honor your time, you know, you need to honor your time and not go over your your paid time because that is your own energy. And that's what money is. Money is is a form of energy exchange. So yourself as as a man going out there in the world, it's like you have to see everything around you as energy that okay, energy you put in, the energy you get out. It's like the flow of life, you know. Um so this is self respect, you know, if you're doing things for others that aren't making you feel good, then you're not stepping into your power. You're not stepping into your you know, into your power literally, into your into your manhood of like, no, I I own this opportunity, I own this decision because this is me like no one controls me I will do it if someone needs help but however I need to be concerned about my own life and not giving or, or having the feeling of being drained too much either I know it probably sounds a little bit conflicted or um, self-centered in a way but it's not it's balance there is complete balance there where you are thinking about yourself Firstly, in a way that you are protecting yourself and keeping yourself safe, um, because there are there are users and abusers out there. There are people out there that are going to use you uh, for whatever reason and take advantage. That's going to happen 
to, to lots of people, but if you could stand your ground and say, no, I'm not doing that right now, or like, hey, I'll think about it, just be open. So having that self-respect is very important. Uh, communication is very important as well. I can't remember the rest of the things I said, but these qualities that we have as, as an, an emotional being, as emotional men, we're, we're, we're beings of emotion where we want to share how we're feeling, but without making ourselves sound vulnerable as well. It's being open or allowing the other person to understand how we're feeling as a guy. And I've been in many conversations before when I've tried to speak to some, some men and they're very closed off and almost hard to, to talk to. Um, and that's fine, that's, that's who they are. But for me, like, yeah, I just want to be understood, you know. Um, I'm not into the whole alcohol, you know, drinking, football, you know, very macho stuff. I like to keep healthy and keep fit. Um, but hearing about football is the thing that like drains me. <laughs> and maybe that's not a divine masculine thing. I don't mind playing it. It's okay. But um, yeah, the, the, the title of divine, divine masculine is really stepping into the divine and having respect, you know, for, for others around you, especially your woman as well, you know, that you, you give yourself as much as you can to your woman, to your queen, to your partner, you know, and it's like, if you're not getting the same back, and for me, I've, I've been in this in the past, you know, many times, where I've given so much in a relationship that I've nurtured my, my partner, I've nurtured them, I've supported them emotionally, physically, and then only not to get my my values being respected or my decisions when I'm looking after us both, for example. And so that's something that, you know, never let your guard down. So if you're a guy watching this and you're in a relationship and you're the one always doing things for your partner, there needs to be balance. And that's the thing of life. There, There is balance, you know, the, the sun and the moon. They're two different entities, but they are balancing each other, you know. There is light, there is dark, and even sometimes... With, with, the, with the sun out and it's daylight, sometimes you might see the moon out there. And it's just, the, the sun's almost like, hey, it's okay, moon, you're allowed to come out, you know, but this is my time right now, you know, you can join me. And then the same on the opposite side, you know, when it's, when, the, when the, the, the moon is out and it's dark and it's like, it's full and it's brightness and then suddenly the sun starts to rise, you know, that happens. It's, it's a way of life, these masculine and feminine energies out there so it's it's about balance you know life for me is about balance in in everything you know relationships food diet working life everything that you do is about balance and having that balance of life to give your best basically so yeah divine masculine is really stepping into the the truth and honesty and you know if you are ever to be confronted on well I'm speaking about myself if I if I'm ever to be confronted about a situation I speak openly about it you know if I don't like something I'm not going to say oh I don't like that about you but if someone makes me some food say I don't know like a soup and you know like it's it's too watery like I like soup that's a bit more thicker and someone's made me the soup and I'm and they're like hey is it nice it's like yeah it's really nice but like I've you know, I find it a bit too warm. Next time, can you make it a bit more thicker? You know, they need the communication. And then, boom, both of you in that communication, that friendship, um, you know, that connection is kind of like, you know, like, oh, okay, he, he likes it like this. Next time, I'll, I'll make it like that. I'm good to, good to be aware. And then two people are okay. But what I find happens in this current world is that the, the old masculine is kind of like, Mm, uh, well, I'm not going to say anything not to hurt them. And it's like, well, you're going to hurt them if they find out eventually and you've, you're eating the soup for, for many, many years and then suddenly they're like, I've never liked this soup. It's always watery. And they're like, what? I always made it for you. You said you liked it. <laughs> and this comes in partners, in relationships. It's kind of like honesty, openness. It's like, hey, I, I really like the taste, but like, could you make it thicker? Like, I like it like this or a bit more. Um... And just, you know, it's having that, that two, the two polarities of like, yeah, really lovely, but, you know, how can we make it better next time? It's having that communication and that honesty 
uh, without hurting as well. That's important to do. And that's something for me quite beautiful I see in people when they, they talk open and like, yeah, it was nice. I really liked it, but like, you know, can we do this next time? And it's like, oh, okay, because when you when you when uh, you when you're in communication, when you're speaking to somebody, sometimes they're unaware of what's even going on in your mind, uh, or how you you're feeling, you know, because you're seeing it from your own perspective, and you want someone to see it from your own perspective. It's impossible unless you communicate. So you can watch um, and listen more about another video of mine called communication. But um, yeah, Divine Masculine is something that is very beautiful, um, very open, and I've met many other men who, for me, are like me, open and talking about emotions and spirituality, and then I've met other men who are very closed, and it's like, it's okay, it's just like, I find it hard to, to speak about, you know. And I've got one friend in my old town who isn't so much like, like me and talking, but when I do open up and speak, I find that he starts to speak too. And, you know, we all got to be strong. This is the thing about men or women. We've all got to be strong. You know, life is sometimes difficult, sometimes hard, sometimes frustrating, but we have to just get through it. We have to just try and get on with our lives. And to be honest, it is what it is. You know, things do get better. But the important thing to do is just be honest and open and have respect for yourself and others and the environment and you know and time as well you know really um, valuing time for yourself and others it's about balance and to me I haven't read much about divine masculine but it came up in my in the conversation in my head of like oh yeah I want to talk about that you know and just talk about how I see things in in my world and I'm still learning I'm still growing so if you're judging me about this video that's fine doesn't matter it's just like yeah, I've got a lot to learn in life. And that's the beauty is that there's so much to learn. And then what next? What happens next? You know, after that, after this life, what do we, hopefully we take all this knowledge with us. Otherwise, this is the meaning of life then just about the experience and us being present and enjoying every moment. So I've hoped you enjoyed this moment and listening to me and watching me. <laughs> so thank you for listening and, um, Yes, yeah, step into your power and I'll speak to you next time. Goodbye.